So when we take this double antiderivative, we are going to ignore the constants of integration. So we're just going to integrate twice and not do the plus c part. So go ahead, see if you can knock out both antiderivatives in one step. And you can always guess and check. So any questions on that second derivative, just guess. I just guessed the powers. I knew they're going to go up by 2. And then check your coefficients. Do you drop the 3 yeah. out from the second term? Uh-oh. Yeah, two x cubed plus x squared, so plus 3x squared. Oh. Yeah. Is that right? It'll be 3x, which will be 3. All right, that looks OK. <clears throat> so in general, so if we do the nth antiderivative of a constant. It should be x to the nth times c. And it would be divided by n factorial. So you get an n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3. So some of these are kind of tricky. <coughs> If there's a power of x inside, you'd have to think about it a little more carefully. But if you're just anti-differentiating a constant n times, you'll get x to the n over n factorial. So let's consider d inverse of 0. So how do I figure out d inverse of 0? We can set it equal to y and basically uh, figure out what y is. So as we did this before, we're going to uh, move the operator to the other side by using the inverse, inverse operator. I know it's that this should equal 0. Well, we'll just take the convention that <coughs> when we ignore constants of integration, um, or that we will ignore constants of integration. So once we know that, d inverse of 0, normally it would be a constant, but we're going to uh, make that constant 0. And so if I did this n times, if I did this n times in a row, I would get 0, anti-differentiate 0. So it would keep being 0. And if I had a basically a polynomial um, inverse operator, so p inverse of d of 0 would always give me 0. So there's all the operators would give me 0, add them up, and I would get 0. Now we'll look at the algebra of these operators.
What should this, doing these two operations, give you? Q. Q. So they should cancel each other out. And likewise, if I did the other order, What should this equal, if things make sense? Q. Q. Uh, did I write down the So for now, you can think of P inverse of D as 1 over, I think I've written this down, i would written this down before, because we're basically treating it like multiplication. So the inverse operator would act like division, or the opposite of multiplication. So that's what, <clears throat> when we write PD over PD, what we really mean is uh, PD times the, or PD and then the inverse of PD. So it looks like division, and because they operate like that, you can actually treat it like division. And what else? Oh, we have the identity operator, of course. which is, if you look above, every operator, if you look at it and combine it together, all those are the identity right there, because you're undoing. They're all actually the same thing, just in different forms. So we're still like, assuming we don't get a constant integration from this? Then? For the inverse operators, yeah. Okay. Or else you'll have one of these two wouldn't work out. I'm thinking this second one wouldn't work out in that order because you'd get a constant at the end and you wouldn't have that in your original Q, basically. Um, so the algebra doesn't work out if you don't ignore your constant. Is that identity symbol there pretty much? That's a big one. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it comes from the same uh, font family as that capital R right there. It's called ma uh, Blackboard Bold, or Math Blackboard Bold, something like that. So solution of, oops, it should be P of D. So it's very tempting to put the word obviously at the end of that sentence. If you read it, it should be pretty clear. All we did was move the operator to the other side. So obviously it's the same exact thing. So how do you solve for y? Obviously, obviously you take the operator and move it to the other side as this inverse. Now, how in the world do we compute that thing on the right side? That's a different story. So it's easy to write down, but then what in the world do we mean by that thing right there? And, and this is when, this is a polynomial operator. So I'm going to use summation notation. So now let's look at how in the world do we start with an operator and get the inverse. That's the tricky part. So how do we do that? So if P of D is a summation, and it will go I equals and let's not use N, because we're gonna use N for the <coughs> top degree. So this will be a I D I. And I have to start I at zero. There could be 
a constant term. And we'll go up to degree n. So that's a n, d n, a n minus 1, d n minus 1, a 1, d, a 0. So if this is your operator, then p inverse of d, you could course write it 1 over p d. It'll be the summation I goes from 1 to n. Where, so what is this bi? bi is the sum. k equals 1 to i. ak bi minus k where m is the smallest positive integer such that if I went one more and took a derivative of bx to the k, <clears throat> I would get 0. So basically, basically dm of bx to the k is the smallest derivative that matters. So after that, they would all be 0. So this looks like a very tricky formula to use. A lot of indexes, and then we have to re-index. And our new coefficients are summations of our old coefficients. So that sounds tricky. So we're going to work through this slowly. Now one thing to pay attention to, this is not a general general solution. It's a solution when q of x is a, not even a polynomial, but is a power function. So it's a very specific solution right here. So this is not a general solution that's going to work for everything. So eventually we'll build something up, but for right now, it's only when your q of x function is this exact function. All right, step one, we've got to figure out what is p of d. So write down the operator that is operating on the left side. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as PDY. And that's a second derivative, not a fourth power. It's a double prime. So any questions on p of d? Now we're going to write down uh, a2, a1, and a0, and try to see if we can use that uh, theorem above and rewrite the inverse operator. So we got a2, a1, and a0.
So I'm copying out of the notes from above, P inverse of D, 1 over PD, or summation. Well, first of all, what is what number is M? Such that the nth derivative of 5x squared uh, is constant. So how many derivatives do I need to take so this is constant? Well, if I take two derivatives, I'll have a constant. I'm worded this poorly. If I want to write smallest integer such that, that is 0. So that means m is 2 is the smallest integer that would um, Yeah, bigger ones make it zero, but that's the smallest one that makes this guy zero. All right, it's basically the degree of your right-hand side. Well, for now, when the right side is very simple. <clears throat> All right, so m is two. So let's go ahead and fill in that value. So we got two at the top, and this is gonna be b i d i, where, now this is where it gets complicated, so just copying this down from above. K equals one to I. So it might be a little worrying. Well, we're trying to figure out what B is, but we don't know the other Bs. Let's see if that'll be a problem. Yeah, the k is a subscript. On the bi minus k? Yes. Oh, I think. So B1, we go K1 to 1, AK, BI minus K, which is A1. B0, is that right? Yeah, I equals 1 right here. I think we need to know what B0 is, though. Uh, let's just write down B2, and then we'll write down, oh, we only need to go to 2. So now we have I equals 2 as our top value. And we get A1, B, I is 2. A1, B1, plus A2, B0. So if we knew what B0 was, we can get B1, and then we can use that B1 value to get B2. I don't have in my notes how to find B0, though. So is that in your book? It might be the regular B coefficient from above. Some other textbook.
think it's on page 272. I think our first B0 is actually a letter B, or the coefficient B. Let's try it out, see what we get. So in this textbook, they do it a slightly different way, but hopefully the way I have works out. All right, so RB is something five. <coughs> so our regular B is five. I'm going to make the choice, and hopefully it'll be a right one. I'm going to say B0 hopefully is five. And we'll see how that works. So this is A1, B0. So A1 is four. So we get four times five, 20. And now we have our values we can fill in here. A1 is negative three. B1 we just got is 20. A2 is four. And B0 is five. Oh, yes, that was negative three times five, negative 15, and so that would only change that 20 to a 15, hopefully, I think everything else stays where it is. So we get 45 plus 20, There's B1 and B2, and we can write our inverse operator now. So I'm reading that that I just circled. So we have P1 D1 plus B2 D2. And just filling in those numbers, B1 is negative 15. plus 65 D2. So you apply the operator here, and it should be pretty clear how to apply it. You're just taking some derivatives, adding the linear combination together. And I'm going to see if I can somehow figure out what your book's talking about.
So I'm reading the textbook, it's not what they get. I know it's gripping to watch me read a book. Yeah, so the exact words they use. This thing is a series expansion of the inverse operator obtained by ordinary division. So I need to figure out what that phrase means. So I'm reading on page 273, about two thirds of the way down. So they, or they reverse the order of the polynomial and factored out a0 at the same time. So I could write a n, no, no, it is a n over a0. All right, so this is the regular operator. You just factored out the a0, which is a constant coefficient. And there is a certain name for this right here. You've seen this pattern before. Well, it almost looks like a power series. So I need to figure out how to f compute the inverse operator by ordinary division. Seems like a very simple sentence. Did we do anything useful today?
if I can't get this algorithm to work, then it's not very useful. I'm going to present some algebra properties. Those are useful. All right, so I can keep some of this. So I'll probably do my first ed editing of a video. This